Lost Sector farming has become kind of an afterthought in Destiny 2, but there's actually a good reason for even the most veteran of players to still step into them from time to time. World Loot Pool Weapon Farming. Not too long ago, Bungie updated Lost Sectors to include farmable world loot pool weapons in addition to exotic armor. Wanted to cover it a while ago, but got caught up in other things, then the holidays happened, you know the deal. But today's the day. We're going to go over what weapons you can get from doing this, what god rolls you should be on the lookout for, and tips on farming any Lost Sector fast no matter what the daily rotation is. Okay, weapon wise, you can currently get the following weapon drops from farming Lost Sectors. Yeah, a shockingly big list, but don't worry, depending on what weapon you're looking for, your odds will only be about one in four because each day only four weapons from this list will be available to farm. Not terrible odds, but it does mean you have to know what weapons will be up for grabs each day. Thankfully, I made a totally not shitty calendar in Excel that has the entire schedule from now until the final shape. Link for that in the pinned comment. You can go for whatever weapons you want, but here's what I think are the best of the bunch. Psy Hermetic, the Glissando, Nox Perennial V, Harsh Language, and the one I'm most looking for, the Combined Action. Let's go through each one. Psy Hermetic is a high impact frame stasis pulse rifle with one of my favorite origin traits in the game, Wild Card, which seems kind of like a meme on paper, but can get you extra surprise damage on people in PvP, and it's always funny. It can roll with a lot, including Elemental Capacitor, Moving Target, Encore, Heating Up, Headseeker and Headstone, all very great neutral game perks, and high upswing perks like Kill Clip and Golden Tricorn, making potential two tap kills easier to get. My gun to my head roll is probably going to be Moving Target Kill Clip because I'm a fan of the classics, aka a boring wonderbred bastard, but you do you. Nox Perennial V, I actually want for PvE damage dealing. Normally, I like rapid fire fusions in PvE, like Ye Old Cartesian Coordinate, but Nox Perennial can roll with both Envious Assassin and Controlled Burst, aka the role that Paul frickin' Tassie just stumbled upon in the wild. TLDR there, defeat a few targets with your primary weapon, then whip out the Nox Perennial, and thanks to Envious, the mag should now be overflowed. You then fire at a big target, land every shot in the burst, and now you've activated Controlled Burst, which gives you higher damage and a shorter charge time. Then you just destroy the poor guy with as many shots as you can. Fun. But before we go any further, do you want good meals at home but you're busy as hell? Just do what I did and check out Factor. They're the sponsor of today's video, so let's thank them real quick. It is 2024 and straight up Anno and I still use Factor at home, about two years now, give or take. If you're unfamiliar, Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, ready-made meals right to your doorstep every week, as many or as few as you want. Content creation can be a real grind, which is why I'm happy knowing two nights out of my week, I don't have to put any thought at all into dinner. Meals come together in minutes and they even offer options like keto, low calorie, vegan, or vegetarian options. Hella convenient and no mess. Just pop it right in the oven for a few minutes and you're good to go. And also, the meals are healthy, designed by dietitians to ensure each meal is packed with premium, science-backed, nutritional quality. This isn't part of the ad read, by the way. My favorite three dishes from Factor, in order, garlic mushroom chicken thighs, any dish with shrimp, and new contender turkey chili. Trust me on that one, by the way. I know people get all weird on chili that doesn't have beef in it, but believe me, it goes hard. Use my link in the video description or go to go.factor75.com and use promo code FALLOUT50 to get 50% off your first box. Thank you, Factor. All right, we back. Next on my list, the Glissando 47 for PvP. Yes, I know, I'm recommending a scout rifle in PvP. No, I haven't been kidnapped by a drug cartel. Everything is fine. TLDR, the Glissando has the ability to roll with box breathing in column four. Here's why I care about that. Normally in PvP, Glissando is a four shot kill, even if you're landing every shot in the head. When activated, box breathing can bring that down to a three shot kill. You can even kill them with two to the head and one in the body. Provided they're at 6 Brazil or lower, 7 and above will live. Overall, box breathing will take your time to kill from 1.0 to a 0.67. And while I'm not a big scout rifle guy, box breathing can put in work on really big PvP maps like Eternity. For column 3 perks, I'd probably recommend something easy like keep away or no distractions, which actually pairs well because you have to hard scope for a second to activate box breathing anyway. Next is one I'm soft recommending, the Harsh Language Waveframe Grenade Launcher. 
Veteran players will be quick to tell you that waveframes have what we call extreme little brother syndrome to the uber godly forbearance waveframe. However, we have to remind ourselves that not everyone who plays D2 is comfortable raiding, and if players want a junior room clearing option, harsh language should be fine. It can roll with destabilizing rounds, meaning it would go extra good with a void build, not to mention envious assassin in column three, so like forbearance, you too can experience the joy of a launcher with two in the mag. It also has disruption break, meaning it could be something you bring into PvP, but only if you're comfortable with the fact that you may one day wind up going to hell when you die. Finally, we come to my personal favorite of the bunch, Combined Action, the 120 RPM hand cannon. I love 120 RPM hand cannons in PvP, and even though my favorite of all time is the Igneous Hammer, I can only imagine that it'll one day get hand-tuned by Bungie because it's really, really good. If that day ever comes, Combined Action is my all-too-eager second-string quarter Back. Now, it does have Kill Clip available in column 4, but on this hand cannon, I actually prefer Adagio. As I mentioned in a YouTube short, which I'll try to remember to link down below, Kill Clip on this gun does not two-tap kill people in PvP at tier 10 Brazil, which is almost every goddamn Titan in the game by now. Adagio, however, can. Yeah, it's gonna lower your rate of fire a little bit, but it's extremely consistent and I love it a ton. My current combined action has Eddie Current in column 3, which is more of a letdown than me to my parents. I'm instead looking for either Tunnel Vision, No Distractions, or Zen Moment, leaning slightly a little bit towards Zen Moment as it prevents incoming flinch for free, which I love. Quick side note, by the way, before I hear any questioning in the comment section, how come no heliocentric? Heliocentric is really good. It's because Drang. Drang is the answer to that question. Moving on, general tips on how to farm Lost Sectors very quickly. I'm gonna be extremely honest. I literally just open up YouTube and type the name of whatever the day's legend Lost Sector is, and then the word speedrun. For example, a few days ago, it was the Bay of Drowned Wishes. So I typed Bay of Drowned Wishes speedrun and found an extremely quick run by a player named Scaryton. Shout out to them. I just watched their very good run, got a vague idea of their build and their method of carving through the Lost Sector, and then I just do my best ditto from Pokemon impression and try to imitate the success of their run. Am I going to tie or beat Skeraton's insane 49 second run? No, probably not, but that's okay because my goal is to just do it really quick for a farm. I managed to get mine down to an extremely comfortable two minutes, which I was able to do while eating snacks and watching Adam Ragusea videos on Monitor 2, so I call that a win. Take note though, you will have to make adjustments if the video is a few months old because the method of champion stunning will change from season to season. Currently, rocket launchers are awesome for overload champion nuking thanks to overload rocket launchers and Argent ordnance on the artifacts, but yeah, that's about it. Just look up fast runs by talented speedrunners and try to use their uber type methods as a guideline for you. And of course, be sure to click the like button on their video because, you know, they deserve it. Quick extra tip because you're also going to get exotic armor doing these lost sector farms, be sure to put on an armor perk in column three of your ghost. I usually go for recovery armor, but you do you. Some people may tell you to also put on prosperity, but remember that only gives extra loot from completing ritual activities. And last time I checked, falling under that umbrella, Lost Sectors do not. You might also be wondering what difficulty to pick for Lost Sector farming, Legend or Master. If you get a Platinum rating, Legend has a 70% chance of dropping a weapon at the end, while Master has a 100% chance. Doing Master also has the added benefit that any weapon drop could have an extra perk in either Column 3 or Column 4. I think the answer is going to depend on both the Lost Sector and you as a player. If you're doing Master and not having that much trouble, keep doing Master. If the Lost Sector is a pain in the ass, and you're taking 10 times longer to complete it on Master than you would on Legend, then yeah, just hop back to Legend. If you have any additional god rolls you're interested in or would recommend to players that can drop from Lost Sectors, tell me what they are down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.